Hey everyone and welcome to the final week of your pre-OS preparation. I hope you're all suitably excited that everything's gone really well over the last four or five weeks and that you're raring to go on Saturday morning. This final week can be quite important and there are a couple of things that you need to be wary of. And I'm going to look at two of those in the next few videos. The first of them is your diet in the last week and particularly whether you need to carbo load or not. And this is something that most of you will no doubt have heard about. You'll read about it in magazines and books and so forth. And, I mean, I guess carbo loading is as much a routine in the race as wearing shoes is. Everyone seems to do it. The question is, do you need to? And more importantly, if yes, then how do you go about doing it? So I went and found Karlene Smith, who we met in episode 4 early on in this series. She's a registered dietitian with uh, Shelley Malter at down at the Sports Science Institute. And I put a couple of questions to her about your final week and your carbo loading routine. Carbo loading can be beneficial if you're running for more than two hours. And you can achieve this by upping your carbohydrate index significantly for the 24 hours to 36 hours before your event. Um, so if you're that 70 kilogram runner, you can, should basically up your carbohydrate intake from 350 to roughly 500 to 700 grams a day. You can do this by eating carbohydrate rich foods throughout the day like bread, cereals and grains, um, but choose the lower fiber options. This not only will allow you to actually consume all those calories, but prevent you from having any stomach discomfort. Top this up with fluid containing carbohydrates like fruit juices, smoothies, carbo loading drinks, and snack regularly on things like jelly sweets and marshmallows or crumpets and pancakes. For the half marathon runner finishing under two hours, carbohydrate loading is probably not needed, but you must still enjoy that carbohydrate rich meal the night before. This should ideally be low in fat and contain only a moderate amount of protein. Good examples are chicken and vegetable stir fry with lots of noodles, a baked potato with a low-fat filling like tuna or cottage cheese, or the traditional pasta with a tomato-based sauce. Unfortunately, things like beer and pizza do not make good pre race meals. In moderation, probably not, but alcohol does have some side effects that may impair performance so I would advise that you avoid it in the 24 hours leading up to the race and rather keep it for once you cross the finish line. So that's the lowdown on carbo loading and your pre-race diet in this final week. What we still need to look at and what's actually more important than carbo loading is what you eat on the day of the race and during the race. Now that means your, your breakfast that morning when you wake up as well as how you then go about replacing energy and fluid in the run. And that's something that I'd definitely will look at and that video will go up on Wednesday so join me then. I think the key though to sum up what we've learned today about carbo loading is that if you're doing the ultra then yes it's important to start two days out with a carbo loading routine and use those shakes, use liquids and so on because there's actually a lot that you need to get in. The, the problem with carbo loading is that it can cause weight gain and if you don't do it carefully then stomach discomfort as well and those two things often offset the advantage. So you might benefit, but you lose a lot. So that's why if you're doing the half marathon, my advice is not to carbo load. And I don't mean to take away the fun of the final few days before, because that's part of the appeal of this race, is the festivities and so on. So by all means, enjoy it, but don't fall into the trap of believing that you have to eat everything in sight and carbo load in order to have a good run. What you do during the run is going to be far more important than what you do in this week before. So stick to your own routine, stick to what you know works for you, and uh, take some of Karlene's advice and use it where it's applicable. We'll have a look at the in-race strategy in our next video on Wednesday. Until then, just keep the training nice and easy. I said there were a couple of things to be aware of. The one is that if you train too hard now in this last week, you can get to race day feeling pretty drained. So just relax, enjoy all the work you've done, let your body recover, and let's hit Saturday running.